and welcome to the Creative Cow Show. Today, Creative Cow speaks with Colin Smith, who has quite the varied career behind him and today makes Premiere Pro tutorials on his YouTube channel, Video Revealed. Hello, Colin. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks so much for having me here. I mean, it, it's Creative Cow. This is like the the the, the height of knowledge out there where I go, especially for complicated topics like After Effects. It's like, go to the cow. Amazing. Thank you. <laughs> now you make Premiere Pro tutorials from a very interesting standpoint as a previous senior engineer with Adobe. So what was the impetus behind bringing this knowledge to YouTube uh, and providing us with all these insider tips and tricks? Right. So first of all, I just want to get the word engineer out of the way. There's software engineers and then there's application engineers. Application engineers show an already finished uh, program that I'd never wrote the code, but it was my job to go into places like NBC, 20th Century Fox and things like that and try to steal them away from Final Cut and Avid. So I had to be on my toes. I had to understand the kinds of things that they had to deal with. So when my job finally ended after 17 and a half years at Adobe, um, someone from marketing actually reached out and suggested, hey, why don't you do a YouTube channel? And I had never thought of it, honestly. It wasn't even on my radar. So I just approached it exactly as I would pr approach any meeting with a big client. I would uh, you know, write down the most important parts. I would prepare a tutorial, uh, including with any things that that they would run up against. So if it was audio problems, I would have pre-built audio problems. And and that, like I said, it would it, it be just like a meeting. Instead of a meeting with people, it's a meeting on YouTube. So then what was your basic focus at Adobe? What types of projects did you get to work on while you were there? Well, the, the, the first products actually this was back in the print world. Back in uh, 1997, video was, video on, computers was still really difficult to do and it was very small and it was low quality. Uh, so it was Photoshop, Illustrator and PageMaker back then. And then eventually InDesign where my job was to go in and you know, steer people away from Cork Express and show them the integration. Uh, so I had a background as a retoucher and in uh, package design in Illustrator. So th these were the products I was showing. So now I was going to big pre-press houses and publishers and newspapers uh, around North America. Oh, very nice. And th that, th yeah, that ended. I mean, it transitioned. My job transitioned over to video. I was actually joining uh, a US, my boss was in the US and I was joining his team. And that's when it really switched to Premiere Pro, After Effects, and then later Audition was added and various other applications under that video umbrella. And what would you say surprised you the most about creating content for your YouTube audience? Oh, wow. It took me about five years, honestly. I'm a little slow, uh, but it took me five years to understand that so many YouTubers had never used a computer before. And that was like a wake up call because, you know, I, I think so many of the, the creative cow audience, you know, the audience that's older like myself, every one of us had to learn a computer first. You had to learn about a computer file management, all of those things. Oh, and then you learn video. So the surprising thing was we've got people who use an iPhone that has no media management on it whatsoever. Apple removed that people just, make stuff. And then all of a sudden they're tasked with a computer. Oh, by the way, if you don't know where something is, you're going to lose it. And they would, you would see posts all the time. Can't find my media. Where is it? Basically they're asking how come a computer doesn't do what the iPhone does. So that was a, a huge surprise to me because I would get comments. And, and if I, I read between the line of the comments and I would realize, oh my God, they have no idea how to manage a file. They think they take their phone or their camera and the video magically goes inside Premiere Pro in the program. What? You, you what? <laughs> uh, but once, the good thing is, is once you realize it, and I did a really, one of, one of my simplest tutorials was creating an analogy of mailing a letter to someone and then having them move and you don't have their new address. It's, it's like taking a USB 
uh, drive or a, an external drive and removing it. All of a sudden, Premiere Pro doesn't know where your stuff is. So I really had to break things down that I'd ni I didn't, I never had to do that at Adobe. At Adobe, we were dealing with professionals. So they, they didn't have these problems or they needed to be reminded of them. So that was the biggest surprise. And because of that, I, all I, I, I just went back to my list because I keep a running list of, oh, I need to do this tutorial, this tutorial. So all of a sudden, my head exploded. Oh, that means I've got like a dozen things, basic, basic things that I need to go back and, and show them. Now, once you finished with Adobe, you went on to assist Canadian law enforcement with video forensics, which is fascinating to me. Now, so how did your role with Adobe lead to a role with Canadian law enforcement? Well, actually, it was while I was still at Adobe and, and we had a Toronto office. So I would go to the office every day and the local Toronto police, there was two detectives who were there, they were working on child exploitation. So we're talking about videos with children in them. And th what they did, they came up with a really smart idea. You can't publish a picture of a victim simply because it puts them in danger. So that's not even an option. So what they thought was if, if they publish the picture of the location and remove the victim, then maybe someone can identify where the location is. That might help them tie into where to how to find the child because their whole job is find children, find them. So they, of course, are using Photoshop and they're trying to clone and, and the, the cloning is, it's not an easy thing to do. So they just reached out to the Adobe Toronto office and said, can anybody help us? And I thought, well, it's Photoshop. Sure. So I met with these two guys. We've, we're friends to this day, like years and years later. And they explained to me the issue that they were having. So all the images that they would show me would have no people in it. They would sanitize those images. And then I would show them techniques. And then that started to go on top of uh, other things like a shadow highlight. Um, what are other ways that they can get the information out of this to create evidence to help find that child or to help find uh, uh, for creating court presentations? And they told me that due to what I taught them, that it resulted in 53 children being saved. That is amazing. That is some of the most important work I could have ever envisioned. Wow. Yeah. So with that, it moved into RCMP, the Ontario Provincial Police, and even Customs, uh, Canada Customs. Believe it or not, people try to wash their their history away by coming up with a new identity. And they have two pictures of the exact same person. Um, and then they would like, they would try to dress themselves up. And then through some research that I did, things like that, the amount of space between here and here, like the angles never changes from when you're a, a young adult to an adult. So I came up with a, a template for them to measure and measure that they could take like two driver's license photos and, you know, within a tiny percentage, they could declare that this person was the same person. So it removes their personal opinion out of it. It has to be scientific, mechanical, and reproducible. So I, I taught customs that technique. Now, have you held any other posts in your varied career that Creative Cow users would resonate with? My first job in using computers, which is uh, it's in package design, and, and, and package design is a little deceiving. People think you're designing the actual wood or, or sorry, the cardboard or the, the plastic. It's the labels. So package design is designing labels. It was like Crest toothpaste and Pampers. So the, my job was to take seasoned artists, designers that would use pen and paper and pencil and, and markup and giant stat cameras. Uh, Creative Cow uh, folks might know of the, the old day when they used cameras. Everything was done optically. And it was my job to take them and then help them do all of that. And, and just so you understand, think of a Pampers diaper package unwrapped on a table. It's about four feet by four feet, and it's drawn within a die line. Imagine that on a 15-inch 
very old Macintosh computer, very slow in Illustrator. So my job was to hold their hand, train them on, on how to use this on a Mac, and reproduce accurate results on the other end. And then from there, I got into retouching. So I was working in advertising, and that was a ton of fun. We're talking a stressful job, but I'll send you a link. I've got a tutorial. Well, it's more like a, a history lesson of when I worked back in, in Photoshop, no undos, uh, one undo, no layers. And you imagine the stress of trying to, to design and paint and clone and uh, really like a, a, a Mercedes ad, a poster, you know, that's about four feet high back in the 90s. Woo, that was tough work. Painstaking. Well, thank you so much, Colin. I, I have watched so many hours of your videos and it is an honor to finally get to talk to you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. It's it's my honor to be, you know, on the cloud. Oh, I'm so happy. Thank you very much for reaching out.